Unit 6, guys, is going to be on stoichiometry and chemical reactions. So we're going to first analyze gram formula mass and the beginning of what we call the mole. So in this video, we're going to analyze simply what is a mole, which is a chemistry term. And then we're going to look at finding the gram formula mass for elements and compounds. So to start off, a mole, represented by MOL, represents a very specific amount in chemistry. So if you think that a dozen eggs specifically is 12, or a pair of shoes is going to be two shoes, a mole in chemistry represents many things. But one of them that it will always represent is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. We call this Avogadro's number, and we'll be getting into this number later on in the unit. So at the moment, please take out your reference tables and copy this down next to table T. When I say the word particles in Avogadro's number, that means you can have X amount of molecules or atoms or ions or ionic compounds. It really depends on what you're actually analyzing. If you're analyzing water, it's a molecule. If you're analyzing iron, it's an atom. If you're analyzing sodium chloride, it's an ionic compound. And if you're doing aqueous work, you're looking at ions. So because we know this fact, we can also state that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of a given element is what we call the gram formula mass of an element. Or we can also say that one mole is equal to the gram formula mass. So what does this mean? This means that if you take lithium, for example, it has 7 grams per mole, or it has an atomic mass unit of 7. That means for every one mole of lithium you have, it should weigh 7 grams on a scale. And if you were to take carbon, for every 12 grams per mole, you will have one mole of carbon. So carbon on an electronic scale, if you weighed out 12 grams of it, we would call that one mole. And we're just getting these numbers right from the periodic table. It is the atomic mass unit of that element. So if we were to look at this covalent compound, CH2O, we're noticing that in one mole worth of it, we also have one mole worth of carbon atoms. This means that you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon in exactly one mole worth of this molecule. Same thing for the hydrogen, but you're noticing that subscript of two means that there's gonna be two moles worth of hydrogen atoms in this molecule. Therefore, you have two times Avogadro's number amount of atoms of hydrogen in one mole of this compound. And finally, with, again, no subscript, you're noticing that there's one mole worth of oxygen atoms in this molecule. So we also notice that in this entire molecule, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen in one mole of CH2O. Now, if this sounds confusing, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of the entire compound in one mole of the sample. So if you were to think, hmm, I need one carbon, two hydrogens, and one oxygen for one out of Avogadro's number. That means you need a lot of each one of these things to make up one mole of the sample. So gram formula mass, or GFM, is the mass of one mole of atoms in an element rounded to the nearest tenth. So again, we're going to use the reference tables to determine the masses of each element. So for the example of H2, you're going to have two moles of hydrogen. So two moles would be two atomic mass units or two grams. You just add up the atomic mass of each hydrogen atom. So one plus one is two. For magnesium, you look it up, it comes out to be 24.3 atomic mass units or 24.3 grams for every one mole. For chlorine, it's for one mole, you're going to have 71.0 because each chlorine atom has a mass of 35.5 atomic mass units. When you have multiple, you're going to see coefficients in front, which represents the, that there's multiple numbers of those molecules or those atoms. So in the first example, we see no coefficient, so no number in front, so we represent that by one. Since there's two oxygen atoms, you're going to say 16.0 times 2, which gives us an equivalent 32.0 grams for every one mole. If you have two O2s that's saying that we have two moles of this, 
So you just multiply everything by 2. If you have 5, that means there's 5 moles of the O2. So you just multiply everything by 5. So the grand fuller mass for a compound or a molecule are similarly done, except you add up everything that's in the compound. So for H2O, you add up all the hydrogens, all the oxygens, to find out the mass of one mole of water. Each hydrogen has a mass of 1.0. Each oxygen has a mass of 16.0. Add everything together, you get 18.0 grams. Ca2P3, you add up everything again you get 173.0 grams for every one mole of Ca2P3. So for aluminum oxide, you again add everything up, you get one aluminum oxide, one mole of aluminum oxide is equal to 102.0. And then finally for iron three phosphate, add up all the atomic masses of all the atoms involved and you'll get 396.6 grams for every one mole of iron three phosphate. Remember the three on, outside of the parentheses of the PO4 just represents that you have three sets of PO4. So let's analyze this. The molar mass of caffeine, otherwise known as 137 trimethylpurine 26 diene, is the chemical responsible for coffee's energizing and psychoactive effects. So how much does three moles of caffeine weigh? So if you look in the bottom right hand side, we're noticing that is the molecular structure with double bonds and single bonds, you know, this caffeine molecule, but the actual formula is C8H10N4O2. So if you were to then mathematically figure out how much that weighs, when we analyze this, we notice that we have eight moles of carbon, which weighs 96 grams, and we're adding that to 10 moles of hydrogen, which weighs 10 grams, and we're adding that to four moles of nitrogen, which weighs 56 grams, and we're adding that to two moles of oxygen, which weighs 32 grams. If that sounds a lot, just add it all together because you have a calculator with you. And when you add it all together, you're noticing that for every mole of caffeine, it should weigh 194 grams. So therefore, if one mole is 194, three moles is going to weigh 582 grams. So by chance, you have 582 grams of a white powder caffeine that means you have three moles worth of it. So right now, we want you guys to complete these gram formula mass problems on your own. We will be checking these in class. Do note, the first two examples have no coefficients in front. You have one mole of sodium chloride and one mole of glucose. However, for the other examples, you either have three moles, two moles, or four moles of every substance. Remember, if you have multiple moles, your total GFM is going to be multiplied by the coefficient in front. 